well. We've been moving a lot of dirt. Oh man, this whole pad here. I don't know how many yards that is. There's got to be 150 yards of uh, soil that we've taken from down below and put up here. But I really want a nice big pad here. For one, if you're playing basketball, you don't want your ball to roll down the hill. So nice to have a level spot up here. I'll bring some concrete in eventually and have a pad in front of the garage. I don't know how big I'll make it. We'll see how the finances are at the end of this thing here. But gravel for sure. And then some landscaping around the front of the house. But I wanted an area where vehicles could drive up and turn around and head on back out without having to do any like three point turn or anything. Cause I've got space, might as well use it. Just means I've got to burn diesel to get the dirt up here to make it level. But I think it's looking great. Leg Arms was here with me the other day and he ran the skid steer and he just kept working circles around this while I kept dumping piles from the big front end loader from down below. And the combination of us really made this, we raised this up two, three feet from where it was and uh, just brought this way out. Oh, it looks awesome. I gotta still do some level, some grading to it, bring it so it's, you know, it's a little oil and even, get it smoothed out. The guys are framing the garage right now. Just about got the whole entire thing framed in. They're doing the plate on the top and some headers for the windows and doors. Oh, it's awesome. So now I got the down all, I'll show you in a second, all in front of the house, all pretty much dug down to where I want it. I got to bring a bunch of topsoil to backfill because I wanted to get rid of this hard stuff and bring in good soil so I can grow grass, hopefully for the foreseeable future forever. And a horse manure. I got a bunch of horse manure to bring into and mix into it. So I wanted to dig down about a foot and then backfill. So all that foot of digging down plus came up here and then I'll bring in good soil there with horse manure and then have my nice yard. But I got to put my septic field in. So I've got the chambers behind the pickup over here. I'm going to stake out the three runs. They're going to be 300 foot runs of uh, 24 inch chamber, like 22 inch wide chambers. And I'll stake it out, get the laser grade, get the backhoe going and start digging away, lay those down, and uh, then bury it, tie up my septic field, and that's one less thing to worry about. Because the frost, freezing ground, could only be two months away. That's gonna come fast. Look at that. All that right there, dug all that out. And right there, so topsoil, whole area, manure, and a beautiful yard. So this is all the topsoil I brought in earlier. That's why I didn't disturb this. But all the areas where I didn't have topsoil, I dug down, you know, a foot to try to bring it. So that way, as I bring in topsoil, we'll have at least a foot of topsoil here. I mean, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but for what we're doing, it's gonna work out great. So, septic tank. Yeah, I gotta come out of there. I gotta dig the backhoe down, put a box in. I'm a little tall here. There's gonna be a, a diffuser box. It's over there, a little concrete box that then splits the runs for the three uh, chamber runs. And so I'll drop that in. So it'll be a uh, schedule 44 inch to that. Then I'll branch off, one will go to the left, one will go to the right, one will go out. And then row of chambers, row of chambers, row of chambers. And so I'm gonna try to square it up with the house if I can and make them in line at the house so it doesn't look awkward when you look out the window and they're kind of at a weird angle. And for that, I brought, oh, where'd it go? Range finder. So I'm gonna stand there, I'm gonna range the house and I'll know exactly the right spots and lay little blocks of wood and start back on. walk around the corner here. It's got the beam set for the main garage door. I guess that's not the main, the large garage door, the 16 foot. Look at that. They've been busy putting OSB all over this thing. Man, it looks good. So it's a 716 OSB. They were a little hesitant to do a lot of this because there's no trusses on and for wind load, it kind of make a little bit of a sale. So when the time comes and the wind's blowing, if you don't have the trusses on there, you might lose a wall and fall over. So they went, held off, but trusses are coming this week. This side's fine, this side's down low, so they cheated all that. 
the upsires. They're just doing one round around the bottom. It's starting to look like a house. I'm glad we bumped that out instead of one just giant flat wall across here. It just adds character to it. it looks good. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. We'll be long and the trusses will be here. And the thing with this house is it's got a gable that overhangs quite a bit of the front porch. There's going to be a beautiful vaulted arch in the front and then a smaller one right where you walk up the steps and then the whole length of the porch will be covered well that vault not vault the gable needs supported by posts well the posts need supported by concrete footings in the ground and that's when we got this beautiful thing of leg arms contraption machine thing that we got the digger derek so we're going to take off this eight inch bit i'm going to put the 24 inch bit on it's over there by the building Pop that off, put 24 on. I'm gonna poke a bunch of holes. I get Roger and Jake, kind of figured out exactly the plans where I need them. Got a bunch of uh, concrete ready mix, ready to go. So if they're gonna bring a trommel or concrete mixer tomorrow, we'll get some water. But I might as well today get the holes drilled. We'll mix the concrete, pour it in the holes, get it ready. So that way when the trusses come, we can have the post ready and support it. Cause it's beautiful weather today. Great time to be drilling. Let's start it up. I almost always forget. Power disconnects, they're amazing, so good. Save you a lot of money in batteries. You just kind of forget to turn them on when you go to use it. Like, Why won't this thing start? All right, 427, let's hear you purr. Uh-oh, we're in gear. That's that, that makes a big difference. There we go. There's our workhorse, man. That thing's been doing some serious work this year. I don't know how many hundreds of yards I moved with it. Four yards at a time, five and a half if you fill that thing plumb full, but more like four. And it's done three, four, five hundred yards. I don't know. It's been enough. But at the end result, it's going to be well worth it. You guys will see. It's going to be beautiful. Keep getting pulled back and forth, back and forth between different projects and different projects. And I'm back here again. All right, let's see what we got. So, the end of the, or the beginning of the infiltrators right here, I've got grade set, so slight slope down to this right here. I figured out this is my grade from here on, it's gotta be level. So I got the height set here, so that way I'll use my laser level and we'll run across this whole thing 100 feet hopefully perfectly level. So I'm gonna be jumping out periodically and sticking this down in the trench and going beep, beep, up too deep, not deep enough. And let's keep going straight forward. And then when I got this all out, start laying chambers in. Fun. If I see the crew just showed up, time I have to stop and go back to pouring concrete for a minute. All right, that's okay. Take a look what the great room will be in the morning. That's gonna be nice. I actually thought the sun came up right off of East Butte, which is right over there. See the little mountains right there in the distance? I think it does towards the middle of winter. Right now it's poking up just behind our grain bins, which is gonna be beautiful. Look at this. Stillness beauty of a Montana big sky morning. <laughs> it's been like a couple weeks of getting the septic system around because it's literally, I just do a little bit and then something happens and I gotta stop and get back to it. But today I'm gonna finish it. I'm planning on finishing it. Got the first 100 foot run dug in. I gotta go get the chambers over here, carry them across, start stacking them in. I'll show you guys that in a second. I'm gonna bury that. And then we'll start digging trench number two. Do that, chambers, bury, and then trench number three. 
and it'll be done. And then that'll have a nice, nice sewer irrigated lawn in that area. And then this will all be sprinkler system down here. Let's get to work. All right, so chambers, I believe you just take it, drop over the top of that notch, and it locks down on that little nub there, kind of like Legos. And I just start stacking them on top of each other the whole way through, and then backfill all this. So let's get to work. First row is in. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty level. If you look down, you can see just a couple spots where they might raise or or drop half inch to an inch. But they also, those those chambers are just resting on soil. I mean, they as you walk on them, they move a little bit. So I think it's all good. I'm right at the limit of depth with some of this grade. They said you don't want to go deeper than four feet. I'm about three feet right now, and I've got a little bit of topsoil i got to put on top. So I'll be within the realm of acceptability. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just how it worked out with the way my septic tank went in and all the depth and everything. So let's start digging another trench. Oh, wait, no. Let's bury this one. And then dig a new trench. Yeah. Well, check it out. Bam, bam, bam. Three 100 foot runs of 22 inch wide by four foot chambers. I got them level with the laser grade, perfectly straight all the way across. Just barely put some soil out. Lightly put some soil on top to bury them, to bed them. Come back in here with the box grader and I'll just level this whole pad out here and make it nice for the top soil to come back on. That's done. That's overkill for this house. For the three bathrooms we have, I know they go by bedrooms, but I don't foresee us maxing out the capacity of this drain field. I, I went overkill on it, so 300 feet, that's enough. Check it out. So we're all connected, diffuser box, everything's good there. And I got the screen in for the drain field, so, or the leach field, so the screen can be pulled out of the tube. You just grab a handle in there, a little PVC pipe, I can pull it up, clean it, put it back in. That's good. And I just finished plumbing in the run from the house to the septic tank. I had to put a little 45 and a 45 and then drop it down to get it down. When I dug the, the hole for this tank, I dug it just a hair too deep, about probably a foot, which dropped all that a foot, which is unfortunate, but too late. So I'll just bury this. It'll work. We're good. Got my tea in there. Got the lid. I'm going to get a riser so that way we can pump this thing in the future when we need to. So I don't have to dig down and try to find the lid. And now that one right there, that's the drain tile for the house, the perimeter of the house. And it runs down this way too. So I thought about tapping it into here, was told don't do it. So I'm not. So now I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna go somewhere over here, turn it somewhere over here, and I'm gonna dig a big hole here, fill it full of field rock, and then have that drain tile just run down inside there. And that way, if it rains, I'll have a nice big cavity for all that rainwater to go to. Leach into the ground. And I have a leftover chamber too. I'll take it back. All right, let's keep going. Last up, dug a big trench here, good six, six and a half feet deep, maybe seven feet deep. I don't know, 30, 40 feet long for that line right there. And that is the drain tile of the house wrapped around the whole house, comes out, comes down here and bloop, I got two extra chambers left. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the line, drop it down. I got the loader running over here. I'm gonna go get a bunch of field rock, which is in a big pile just over the hill. Fill this in with some field rock and then I'll carefully level it out. Then take those chambers, put them on top, run the four inch schedule 40 underneath it with some road fabric around the sizing ring to keep dirt from going in, road fabric across the top of it, more rock, bury it. Then I'll have a nice chamber there for when it does have a nice rain event. If there is or ever reason that water leaches along the side of the house foundation, 
it'll all run down and fill that thing up and leach in the ground there and not into my basement. I doubt I'll ever need it, but you know what? I'd rather have a, this than a soggy basement, so let's just do this. That's done. Besides the septic tank, I'm not going to bury that yet. Let's take all that topsoil that I pushed last year off back over everything. Do I have enough? I don't know yet. I have to haul some more in. We'll see how far we get. <laughs> 